So Dark Redeemer said the Jen doesn't deserve to watch anything good. Well, that's why she's on this show. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 136 for Thursday, the 27th of July, 2017. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests talked about all things geek and celebrate whatever the hell we want to. And today we have we have a gen. Wait, wait, no, we have gen. No, we have some gen. No, the, we the, have the one. The, <laughs> the, we have the gen. That's right. All right, Jen. Uh, nobody cares about Kent and how his week went. How are you? I'm awesome. I'm doing fantastic. Well, I mean, until you came on this show, but whatever. And then I started talking to you guys and it all went down. No, <laughs> that, that's, that's what we're good for. Um, this, that, that's why we do it on Thursday nights. We want to go ahead and fuck up your weekend before you get a chance to. Um, <laughs> it, ex- it exonerates you from all things bad. <laughs> How you doing, Kent? <laughs> oh, dude. Like, this is this is awesome. I'm so glad to be here talking to Jen. Um, you know, I, I got to put up with you uh, in order to talk to Jen. So, you know, whatever. It's a give take. Uh, no, but this week has been awesome, dude. I've been getting some shit done. Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's good, dude. I I finally pulled the trigger on something that I've been wanting to do for a really long time. Yeah, I am putting in uh, some somewhat of a backyard movie theater in my house. Uh, I, I went ahead and bought a projector. Mm. Uh, got um, you know all all the 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 stuff that I need to set up a like a a backyard cinema, and it's gonna be fantastic. And the first movie we're going to play is probably next week. Not this weekend. Next weekend. And I think we're going to watch Troll 2. Oh, uh, that'll be fun. Fair enough. That's, I mean, that's that's a good movie to sit outside uh, with creepy shit crawling all around you. Uh, <laughs> that's, that sounds about right. Hey, and uh, just for the record, man, it's about time you put up with me to hang out with the Jen because I made you put up with a lot of Jens to hang out with me back in the day. So we're just going to go there. Um, um. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Those are lesser gens. Uh, they, they were, uh, yeah, they were, they were minor gens. They were like demi gens. We'll go that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well put. Well put. Um, uh, hey, dude. We- uh, um, this weekend, man, I hiked on a fucking glacier and went whitewater rap- rafting in the same day. Shut up. Yeah, like an hour from the house. Like, what's up? Who else can do that? Who else? Show me in chat. In in chat, can we? If you've ever hiked on a glacier, like an actual no shit named glacier, not just some big ass like chunks of ice in a parking lot, like actually (laughs) hiked on a glacier, uh, uh, speak up in chat. And since nobody's going to raise their hand for that, raise your hand if you would ever want to. <laughs> I don't think oh. I've ever even seen a glacier like in, in person. Oh, man. It, it, I got to tell you, dude, it was a uh, bad ass. I'm telling you, like, because there's certain points where you can like look down and you'll have a, a you'll cast a shadow on the ice. But there's light going into the into the glacier all around. Right. So you cast a shadow on the ice and it goes from like, you know, just looks like normal ground to where it's actually glowing in your shadow because all this blue is coming back at you from all the other wow. light hitting the glacier. Um, way cool, dude. Way all totally worth my fucking time. Oh, it was nice. so good. It was so awesome. Um, we hiked way up, uh, like it was a six mile hike total. And at the very tip of it, there was like water just coming out of the ice, you know, and you get your water bottle and fill it up. Delicious. Oh man. It's like one of my favorite things ever. Very that cool. Amazing. Man. Yeah. Did uh did, did you hike on a glacier this weekend, Jen? No, I did not. But what I, you know, semi related, not really. Um, but kind of related. <laughs> in 2 weeks I'm going to go camping. Um I'm going to go camp at a lake south of Tucson. Um uh and and I uh realized that I only have like half of my camping gear still. It's funny how like that happens like go to marriage and it's like you get half the stuff. I literally somehow ended with exactly half of the camping gear. Oh. So <laughs> like, like so is I've it been... is it cut down in half? Like was this was this an, <laughs> yeah, right down was this the middle. effort it's like you have half a tent, half a sleeping bag. <laughs> you got like half of one of those little sticks that you use to hike with. Like you got one, you know, one half of a log, you know, but <laughs> it's bad. Yeah, it's it's not good. So I've been working on like what I need, but then I realized like I'm going by myself and I'm like I call my mom. I'm like, "Mom, is it going to be okay like i'm gonna be out there by myself like it'll be fine right because i mean my two dogs like 16 pounds and six pounds so if somebody attacks me they're not gonna do anything Mm. they're gonna bark a lot and then probably ask them to pet them like that's what they'll do 
Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so I've been prepping for that. It should be fun. I'm gonna fish while I'm out there. It's uh yeah, it should be a good time. I'm looking forward to it. See, uh I I like to fish. My wife likes to eat fish. Uh she doesn't like to fish and I don't like to eat fish. Uh, we just need to find someone to clean the shit because I'll go pull it out of the river all day long and she'll eat it all day long. We just need that middle step taken care of. <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly the same as you, Amos. So I can't I can't fulfill that role. <laughs> hey, um, just so we're clear. There was another huge event, like life-changing event on Sunday. It's called the Game of Thrones. I was going to say oh. the next episode of Game of Thrones, because yeah. that's all I'm focused on. Yeah, it's, it, it, got, like <laughs> every, it, it is, they're, they're hitting, I don't, I don't want to get into spoiler territory, because uh, whatever. Um, mostly because I was just so amazed that I didn't get, get a chance to watch it again, like I normally do. This show, they have, it's not even like stride. They are hitting every single point dead on every scene, every line. This is the epitome of television right now. Mm. Yeah. Oh, uh. um, yeah. And this, this episode, I, I, I like the way it ended um, again, not to spoil it, but it ended in a way that you don't know exactly what you saw in the last shot. Mm. So it, it triggers conversation and debate mm. and it's, um, yeah, I, I, man, it, yeah, you're right. It's hitting all the beats. It's, uh, it's exciting. It's intriguing. It's, uh, God, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? Mm -hmm. and, uh, the other thing too, is like, not to get all like woo feminism here, but it's really amazing to, to think that we have a show with that many strong, powerful, amazing women. Mm. And last episode in particular, there was a moment where there's like four, very powerful women and you're just like whoa wait a minute these are all chicks that i didn't realize it until afterwards but i was like yeah. wow that's really cool yeah in yeah. fact i didn't even i didn't even notice that it was you know four powerful women in the in the room having this moment until the recap you know like at the end of the episode how they do the little inside the episode oh thing. i should have watched that i didn't catch it this week yeah they, they all right, talked all right. about I, and I was like, oh, shit, that was like, wow, that was I, I have to bring this up. If you are doing a Game of Thrones podcast, video cast, vlog, blog, <laughs> log, if you're if you're shit in Game of Thrones <laughs> and you're not watching those little cut, those little extra scene things at the end with the fucking creators of the show, get the hell off my Internet. <laughs> Just get off my Internet. I'm so tired of watching these 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 breakdowns of the episode and you realize halfway through they didn't even watch the little thing at the end like get all the information you can you're going in blind god fucking bastards. yeah that's really lame actually i spent like probably an hour yesterday on the phone with one of my best buddies and we were talking about game of thrones and we were like okay and then I, at one point we were like googling and like pulling up the uh family trees because we're trying to figure out like what happened to so-and-so did that ever get wrapped up wait who's that so whose cousin is and we we're just going kind of nuts and then i realized in this conversation with him is Jen like three seasons ago Jendry was like rowing a boat away is he still rowing a boat away right now i think he is <laughs> like that's kind was, of a few seasons ago i was half expecting to see him on dragonstone like he got lost and came back or something like that but yeah right but i'm like where did, where has he been like that has not gotten wrapped up. No, I think Gendry has a, has another big role to play. Um, Maybe, I yeah. think he's the his house. I mean, well, you know, if you can consider him part of the house, I don't know. He, he's a he's a Baratheon. I mean, I mean, he's Baratheon's bastard son. So I mean, he is he is technically a he's, Baratheon. He's more Baratheon than uh, than John is a, a Stark. So and. And John got the throne, so I'm just saying there's a chance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a valid point. <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, so we celebrate all things geek. That's what we do on the show. That's that's like our fucking thing, right? I'm a homeowner. Sometimes when you're a homeowner, you geek out about the stupidest shit that no <laughs> one else cares about. <laughs> you know what I got today? You know what I picked up today that I've been waiting for for 10 days because I bought it 10 days ago and it had to be ready because it had to be inspected and assembled and everything else. And what I got today? You know what I got today? You know what I got today? <laughs> Let me guess. Something you're excited about. A real doll. I mean, just kidding. I mean, I didn't say that. 
<laughs> I'm going to be so disappointed if it's not a real doll. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I got a whole army of those little elves for the front yard. Uh, oh, no, no. Um, <laughs> like that was way better, right? Uh, no, I got a fucking riding lawnmower, and not just like you know, uh-huh. hand me down some shit like that. Like my own, like like my riding lawnmower, man. Um, it's not, it's not like super special with all the attachments and shit, but it'll haul ass through my backyard. <laughs> nice. Because that's what I was doing right before this podcast. That's why I look all sinusy and shit. If you're watching video, uh, if you hear me sneezing halfway through the episode, is because uh, allergies uh, can kiss my ass. And um, yeah, yeah, man, it's awesome. Like I've got this this grass in my backyard that's like six feet tall, like literally six feet tall. Uh, because that's incredible. Because I hate fucking mowing. Um, and it's it's just chomping down. Like I've been, I've doubled the size of my my usable yard in just the hour and a half before uh, the, before the show. It this kind of reminds like three months ago. I no maybe like four or five. I don't know. This sometime earlier this year, it was my first. This is my first time I'm renting a house, not an apartment. And I was hanging shelves, and it was not going very well. My mom's like, "You gotta buy a power drill," and I'm like, "Oh sure." So I bought a power drill and then I came home and I used it and I was like, oh my God, this has revolutionized my life. I was so excited. I did so many things. I was just like, I can do anything I need to do ever. Like I have a power drill now. I'm invincible. Exactly. And and then one day you'll, you'll, you upgrade to the battery operated one and you're like, I can do shit in all the rooms now. (laughs) No, it was incredible. So I totally feel you on the, on the home home tools and and a writing mower that's incredible those are like fancy super fancy uh well i put it off for a long time because it's just it's a lot of money to go and and buy and it's like if you don't need one you're not fucking you know, like i'm not gonna get one you know um and finally i was just like i i i can't mow the yard effectively right now because my knee like i can get a, get about halfway done and i'm just dead for three days um and getting the kids to do it like it's yeah, they should be able to do it, but then I'm like the man of the house. Like, let me. So I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let my, my, uh, my misogyny go wild, and I'm gonna get a damn lawn, riding lawnmower so I can take care of my own damn yard because I'm a man. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. No. I mean, if that's the form that your misogyny <laughs> takes, I guess that's healthy misogyny. Right. <laughs> it's, it's not the worst case, right? <laughs> Yeah, I think things could definitely be worse. That's great. I would say machismo, but machismo would be out there cutting uh, six foot tall grass with one of those manual, like little scissor type mowers. You know, the I actually really like those. Or I, just with I a still spike, own one. Actually, yeah, just out there with this <laughs> harvesting it like grain. A, a machete. You just take a machete and you're good. Yeah. Out, out there with a Swiss Army knife with a Boy Scout symbol, cutting it each each individual. Uh, uh, Blade of grass, you know, at a time. Oh my god, yeah. Uh, with a with a uh, with a little with a like a slide rule to measure each one as you go along to make sure they're all the right height. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Good <sighs> luck with that. <laughs> hey, um, there's been a lot of D and D happening lately. Is this like a thing of turned nerdtacular? Because like we started a game last night here on Diamond Club. Uh, I got some. D&D going on with the kids uh, and Jen, apparently you've uh, started doing some Pathfinder. Yeah. So um, I'm actually kind of a noob to, to D&D and Pathfinder too. Like I actually had only played a couple times and I think I'd mentioned to you at Nerdtacular, like every time I'd done it, it was like, let's spend three and a half hours making a character so that you can play in our game since we're already level whatever. And then I never get to play that game again and I'm sad and I get annoyed. So this time um, we did a lot of prep ahead of time. The DM um, set it up in advance. We did like a short one month campaign while he was, um, he was deployed out of town, uh, or he was deployed and then he was somewhere else base, at a base somewhere. So we had like a month to prepare. So he put around all this background information and everything else. He got the details from our characters and it's actually a mythic pathfinder campaign. So it's really awesome. He like took the time to give us all based on our characters. He made like unique abilities for each of us so our when we finally went mythic of it, uh, in the story he gave us um instead of just having a general mythic uh, ability at our first mythic level I mean, we have these like super crazy like powers that are specific to how our characters do stuff so it's been really fun um it's really crazy and i'm since i'm a big old nerd i bought a my little figure and i'm i'm working on painting it so that i can 
I can have my, you know, when I put it out on the map, it looks cool. It's not just one of those little cardboard ones. So it's really fun. I'm playing a spellcaster, so I just, you know, cast spells. And generally, other than that, I just stand there and be useless. But it's, you know, it's fun. <laughs> be, be, being a being a spellcaster in, in any any form of D and D is like really really awesome for the first fight of the day, and then you're just like, okay, guys, uh, uh, go have fun. I actually kind of yeah. cheated. Like, I went with Arcanist, which is a hybrid class of this of the sorcerer and the wizard. Mm-hmm. So I get all this flexibility, and I have just crazy powers. Like, it's gross. And then when you add the mythic tier, like, I can do stupid amounts of things. I can, like, three times a day, I can just pull a spell out of any, as long as it's arcane. I don't have to know it. It it doesn't even have to be a wizard spell. As long as it's arcane, I can do it. And I can do that three times a day. Just out of my butt. Like, that's nuts. That's crazy. But but, but are are you going to role play that like that, though? Like, you you know, hey, hey, you know what? I need a magical, I just need something right now. So you just bend over, drop your trousers and (laughs) and just... I lift it. my my lady cloak and yeah. I and I pull it out. Yeah, no, that's been one of the really funny things is I'm playing a true neutral character and I didn't realize that everybody else we're all playing siblings that were all orphans that were adopted and raised by these same people. So we're all siblings, and there's a couple that are like the chosen siblings because they're just the, the the chosen ones, like the more legitimate children. And apparently, I'm the only one that's not some form of good. Mm. so we're like going somewhere and they're like but we got to stop these people and i was like no we came for a job let's go home and get paid fighting them is going to take time <laughs> and i don't i don't want to do that and they're like but the meaning and i'm like no dude that's we're done <laughs> we're out like and they're like what's wrong with you and i'm like what's wrong with you we did a job let's get paid like move on mm. <laughs> i uh <sighs> I started. So I had I had like a thirty minute notice to build a character the other night, and I went to one of my fallbacks, and luckily nobody else had anything like it. So I like to play the slightly young and off gender, as in everybody wants to play male, so I play female. It's usually a halfling or a small elf if there's a, such a thing. I like that. And then, um, so basically, I play this tiny, dainty little character, and then I throw like a whole bunch of strength in her. So she's <laughs> she's like she's like Hulk girl. <laughs> See, my very first Pathfinder character, that's what I did. I made a, a halfling I made a halfling rogue that was not a rogue. It was like a halfling rogue that was more of a fighter and I couldn't do shit unless I was flanking, but I'd jump in and, and do a whole bunch of cool shit and then like jump out and like run and hide cuz I couldn't <laughs> take a hit. And it was silly because I just wanted to be this tiny little character. And I love the idea of just like diving in, mm. being super awesome and then bouncing. Um, well, I'm, I'm playing an occasional character in this particular campaign. So I'm, I have to have a character that can pop in and pop out. So I'm playing a ranger uh, because rangers are good, really good at like you can blend in and blend out a ranger out of a campaign very easily. So and plus, uh, once you get your animal companion, I love the fact that my character is going to be like three and a half feet tall and the animal companion is going to be like four so <laughs> like this is me and my giant buddy yeah like my character's three and a half feet tall but i got a ger- four foot tall german shepherd just wandering around with me like it's whatever uh <laughs> i do think you're right though i feel like i feel like D and pathfinder and to other just tabletop games in general are really having a comeback like the fact that pax did uh, unplugged which is an event solely devoted to everything not video game it does seem like it's kind of having a little bit of a renaissance right now with people yeah yeah that's for sure my uh my oldest son is running a campaign and um yeah like like all the kids seem to be into it well at least you know if you've got any sort of nerdy bone in you at all like it's it's definitely resurging in popularity could, could this be the because we've mentioned for a while now that there's like this resurgence in nerd culture like there's this flood right it's becoming it's becoming the thing to, to do right to be you know being a geek is like being cool right yeah it's basically mainstream now right Nerdism. so so maybe D D resurging back and and tabletop and, and pen and paper role playing is like this is the time when it'll actually come back and that'll be the one benefit we have to our our nerd world being uh, uh, like if filled with all these wannabe nerds. Yeah, and like we're the cool guys that everybody looks at. Like, oh, teach us the ways. Yeah. No, okay, it just went too far. Now that's <laughs> that's not gonna happen. <laughs> well, see, for me, like I I, I go back. I, I started tabletop role playing when I was twelve because I lived in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of nowhere, California. 
and my friends like lived 30 or 45 minutes away. So we would all like camp out at somebody's house for the weekend. We'd pull out our white wolf books, which is all like vampire and werewolf. And we would role play and like have a game session all weekend and somebody would run it. And sometimes it'd be just one continuing campaign. Sometimes we'd just do something for that weekend, but there was nothing else to do in our County. So mm, yeah, <laughs> at that point yeah. it was, it was how we do things. And it's just kind of interesting now how many people are just getting into it and like, Oh, this is cool. I'm going to try it out. Maybe now we'll finally get a proper dungeon and drag or a proper Dragonlance movie. Oh my God, please. Oh, oh. <laughs> please. <laughs> I need to get Margaret on the phone. Um, God, yes. Hey, well, uh, unfortunately, she doesn't own the rights to it. So it's uh, like, ah, come on. Uh, yeah. But yeah, man, we might not be getting a Dragonlance movie anytime soon, but there are a lot of really cool movies coming out. Oh, okay, so we have to preface this with SDCC was last weekend. Yes. Um, San Diego Comic-Con. It was a little they- light, though, than normal, wasn't it? I felt like, I don't know. I, I was good stuff, but it wasn't very many things. I liked it because usually I don't even know it's coming. Then it passes and all of a sudden I'm brought it. Bra- I'm, I'm hit with all the shit that I should have been keeping up on. And this year it's like, oh yeah, there's some movie trailers and um, a couple, a couple games. Uh, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> I, I feel like we got, we got hit with a, not only a lot of trailers, but a lot of really good trailers yeah. um, in particular, man. Uh, Jen, have you read ready player one? By Ernest Klein. Um, no, not in its entirety. Um, yeah. but I know that will be remedied very soon. Either. Um, man, I highly recommend this. I, oops, sorry, I pushed a button. Um, uh, but Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, like I, I am so excited for this. Ready Player One is one of the best books I have ever read, ever, and I've read uh, untold hundreds, if not thousands, of books. Um, I love this book. It's very, it's very nerdy and it's very nostalgic. It's like every paragraph has like probably five Easter eggs in it. Some nostalgic uh, piece of like eighties, early nineties, like nerdy, geeky stuff. And uh, I, like I love this book so so much. And when I found out like probably two years ago now that they were going to make a movie of it, I was like, yeah, okay, um, yeah, that that might suck. Uh, just because there's so much IP in it and how in the world are you going to like, just get the rights to make this film? And then I hear, uh, I don't know, probably six months ago that Steven Spielberg is going to direct it. Mm. So I was like, oh, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, last weekend they released the trailer and holy shit, like it is cracking up to be everything that I want it to be. I am just overjoyed and, and thrilled that this looks so good. Um, have, have either of you seen the trailer yet? No. I haven't seen the trailer yet, but I do own Ready Player One. I started it. I just never finished it. And so now I'm pulling it out of my books that I started and never finished pile. And I'm going to actually read it. It's one of the books I'm going to take camping with me. So see, I'm set up. Awesome. Yeah, I highly recommend reading this before the movie comes out, just so you can share the hype with me. Oh, man. So excited, if you can't tell. (laughs) I'm a huge Thor fan. I've been, I I used to read the Thor comics back in the day. So as you can imagine, I was pretty excited about the updated Thor Ragnarok trailer. It leads me to believe that everything awesome that I was hoping for is going to be a thing in this movie. And I'm super excited. How would you compare it to Mm -hmm. the teaser trailer that came out uh, like a month or so? So... I see there was a little bit more about uh, connecting the dots of how the different characters are going to actually play in the bigger picture. Because if you remember, all of this is leading up to Infinity War. So I was really curious as to how they were going to position the villain and exactly the role that she's going to play in the bigger story. Um, I'm a huge Marvel fangirl. So, I mean, this is. The, the last several years have been amazing, you know, and they're like, these are the little movies for the next 15 years. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> I know yeah. I'll be in 2018 or 2020. But um, I, I liked that they gave a little bit more depth. So I, may, I that made me it reassured me that the story is going in a way that I'm on board for. So, yeah, I thought it, it I, I agree with you. I, I think it, it 
uh, filled in some of the gaps, and uh, it was still a very fun trailer, especially the little like ten seconds at the end with the uh, conversation between Hulk and Thor. I thought was pretty cool. Um, but uh. I have to say that I'm more of a fan of the teaser that they released uh, of several weeks ago, uh, just because it it just hit all the right notes. Like I've played that trailer probably thirty times if I've played it once, and uh, it's just so much fun. And oh, I, would I have too. <laughs> I would have been fine just riding that wave into the movie, um, I guess, here in a couple months, right? When it comes out, like September, I, I think. I feel like they had to, though, because uh, to be honest, um, Thor 2 was not was not the best. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of a departure. A lot of people were not super um, jazzed on it. So I think that they're trying to be like, look, this isn't going to be Thor 2. This is going to be better uh, because Thor 2 was was not super well received. Um, unfortunately. So I'm hoping this is going to bring it back. Uh, so you, you say that you're a Marvel fan girl. What about DC? Any love for the other <sighs> big comics? I, after Wonder Woman, I cried the first time I watched Wonder Woman, literally tears. Like the guy sitting next to me at the theater probably thought I was insane. Cause I was just <laughs> like, my eyes, I couldn't, I had emotion, I had lady emotion. And I just like, that's what happens to us ladies. Our emotion just oozes out our eyeballs, even if we don't want it to. And I couldn't stop because I was just so proud of how they handled her, her story, and how amazing she was. And the Justice League trailer puts her in charge, makes her the lead, and that's where it's supposed to be. And that's where it should be. I mean, with, with Batman, too. But but for the most part, it it solidifies that. And... Finally, they got an origin story right on the DC side, which is good. Um, so I'm pretty stoked. I'm yep. I'm really excited about Justice League. Actually, I wasn't, but now I am. Amos, did you did you see the Justice League trailer? No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, all right. So <laughs> I the only I the only comic book ish movie I've been excited about in forever. Was Deadpool, and the only well, Deadpool is the best. The only so, I mean, the only one I'm excited <laughs> about again is Deadpool too. <laughs> like I'm sorry, it's just I, I, I'm, I just want I'm, Deadpool I'm, all the time. I'm I'm not riding the hype train on this. I just I just haven't caught it. Someday something's gonna catch me and it's gonna be good. And I don't know. Is, is Deadpool and in second place is uh, Spider Man with uh, Tobey Maguire, the first one. I mean, those, those are like my top two MCU movies. Oh boy! And well, Dead, Deadpool's not even MCU. <laughs> in the first Spider-Man's been overwritten, so it's it, 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 like it's. <laughs> I heard Homecoming was good, but I didn't get a chance to see it yet. I'm planning on seeing it this weekend, actually. So I'm was, stoked for that. If you if you enjoyed Spider-Man and Civil War, this is two hours of that. Hmm. It's, it's yeah. Really cool. I did rewatch Civil War this week in preparation to of seeing Spider Man Homecoming. Yeah, right on, right on. Um, yeah, so I, I I kind of mirror you a little bit with Justice and League. And Marissa like, Tomei is hot, so hopefully she's in it. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Oh, yeah, she's in it. Um, oh, speaking of Marissa Tomei, uh, I've heard recently at, in podcasts, different podcasts I listen to, I've heard like five different re- references to the movie My Cousin Vinny. Like one of my favorite uh, movies of all time. I'm just saying. Yeah. That's Dude, great. it's the best. If you haven't seen the movie, you you, you got to do that now. I uh, think I watch it like two or three times a year, just uh, on 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 principle. I love that <laughs> movie. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know. Uh, jury's still out on uh, Justice League, so we'll see what happens with that. But uh, I, you know, one of the things that I'm I'm super excited about also is the Netflix series Stranger Things, part two. Part two is coming out second season in just a couple of months, October. Yeah. And they showed a trailer at Comic Con, and oh my god, oh my god! It's it's going to be out just long enough for me to recover from the end of season seven of Game of Thrones. That's that's the buffer they're given because you're going to be Game of Thrones is going to end in like what late August, um, and then it's going to give me about a six week buffer to fully digest that and rewatch it about three times, and then boom, Stranger Things season two. Yeah, uh, Jen, were you a fan of Stranger Things? I started it. I didn't finish it. And I, I don't know. It just didn't, I know I'm like a bad nerd. A lot of people, I have a lot of friends that really loved it and it just didn't hook me for some reason. I also have been kind of going through a phase where I needed to watch super lighthearted 
non because I I'm a big Walking Dead fan and because I read the comics and of course with the show there's wonderful hot people on that show so I've enjoyed it for a multitude of reasons but I didn't even watch this season because I just couldn't handle any dark stat mm. or whatever stories of course Game of Thrones right now has been my one exception to that but for the most part I've been trying to really just watch super lighthearted stuff because otherwise there's just so much I don't know I've been trying to avoid anything dark so I, I think that's maybe part of it uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't like anything dark, um, like, like redeemers, uh, <laughs> oh, well, good thing he's a douche redeemer and not a dark redeemer. Wow. So <laughs> <laughs> I, wow. I do that one for you, Jen. I need, <laughs> oh, thanks for the love. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so only one other trailer, like super excited me and that was the Kingsman two trailer. Uh, any other oh, Kingsman? Yeah. Fan? Oh, I'll um, definitely watch it. I'll see that in the theater for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Amos, did did, did you catch the Kingsman uh, uh, hype train over the last couple of years? Um, um, so uh, the Dark Tower is going to be coming out soon. Um, <laughs> like, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, super, I'm, I'm, ex- I'm excited about that. Amos is like Game of Thrones, 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 Game of Thrones. No, Game no, of no, 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 no. <laughs> Stranger Things, like I'm psyched about that. That's oh, going to be amazing. Stranger Things. <laughs> I'm still trying to finish uh, uh, House of Cards this last season of House of Cards. I haven't finished that oh, quite yet. I do that too. But again, talking about the darkness, like really? Ugh. Everything <laughs> is so dark and intense. Yeah. That, that, that's another one that's just spot on. Like every line is delivered perfectly. I don't know how many takes they got, but holy shit. And if you, if you, if you watch that show and you're not a fan of Kevin Spacey, check your polls. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, um, yeah. Real quick, there's something we, we like to do, and it, we've had some flux lately. It's called um, uh, ration. Ration? No, no is, is it not ration? Um, uh, how about patriotism? No, that's something we that's something we have. Right, right. Um, um, pa- uh, pa- patricide? Pat? No, 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 not patricide. Well, Game maybe, of Thrones? Oh no, sorry, patricide. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we already <laughs> talked about that. Can we can't go back to the subject? That's that's how you, you got to keep going forward. Yeah. Um, um, pa- Patron. 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 Yes. I like Patron. Uh, we should take 18 shots of Patron. Um, if- oh, God. Like over the course of a month. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have 18 people that are given uh, just a little bit of scratch back to us each uh, each each week, actually, um, on patreon.com slash ritual Oh, yeah. yeah. Man. We've got some really awesome people. That's 18 people. That's 18 of yeah. my favorite people of all time. Um, I think I'm one of those people. I, I have not. I need to rectify you, that. You, you you are, and we're glad you are because we just had one drop out. One of our longtime supporters oh. dropped out. Uh, they they had some issues going on. They couldn't uh, continue their support, and they dropped out the day yep. before you picked it back up. So we appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Uh, no, we absolutely appreciate our patrons, and we try to give them a little bit extra each week, uh, whether that's uh, pre-show, post-show, like extras. Uh, we try to give them um, sneak peeks at things to come, like our interview with uh, Gloria Young. Uh, that was a patron exclusive for a couple of months, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so we try to throw in little tidbits like that and give a little something back for their generosity. Um, Can I jump if- on your ad real quick and just say that that was an amazing episode and everybody should listen to it. It was awesome. Hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I, it was a blast. And uh, Gloria is awesome. Uh, Glowbug Young on Twitter, if anybody wants to uh, shout out to her. Um, but yeah, if if uh, you enjoy the show and you don't have the scratch to support us, please go to iTunes or wherever you get our show and just give us a five-star review. That would help us out tremendously. Five-star shitty reviews. That's what we like. We like five-star shitty reviews. Yes. Uh, talk as much shit about the show. Tell us how awful we are, but give us five stars. Uh, well, I, I don't care if you dump in bad, bad. T- I mean, if you feel like typing it up and you've got a bad story from your childhood where your dad neglected you and I don't know, <laughs> like uh, played to uh, played alone with your sister a little too often. That's cool. Go ahead and put that oh in God. there. But no. give, just give us a five star review. Don't do that. <laughs> Post secret that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cru- cruise on by iTunes. Hit us with that five star shitty review. We we really appreciate those. We've gotten a couple so far, and it's pretty pretty awesome. Yep. Once we collect a bunch of those, we are gonna have like a little special segment on the show. Yeah, and, and- yeah exactly. Um, and. Uh, <laughs> 
chat, chat room. Uh, I'm, I'm, I might have brought up some memories in chat room because they're going a little crazy right now. <laughs> hey, um, I've been hanging out with Ashley and Amber like because they're here. They leave next week, which is why I won't be on the show next week. Uh, just go ahead and clar- clarify that now because I'll be actually taking them to the airport so they can fly back to South Carolina and, and be miserable again. Um, <laughs> but hanging out with Ashley on uh, Sunday last week, we drove into town. It's about a 40 minute drive into Anchorage and back and she broke out a little thing that I've been wanting to listen to just never took the chance to go still hear it and figure out what it was. She broke mm-hmm. out Hamilton, the musical. Oh, sweet. If, okay. you, if you haven't listened to this and you like history at all, if you like epic rap battles of history at all, or if you just like good fucking music that has a point, put this on your little iTunes shit. Listen to Hamilton. It's great. The music's good. The lyrics are good. It's on point. I'm not saying it's historically accurate, but it gets the gist of the story right. And man, so good. I listened to it uh, with with Ashley. Then I listened to the Stuff You Should Know podcast about Alexander Hamilton, which just made it even more interesting. And then I listened to it again. And holy crap, it's it's on my playlist now. There's several songs in there are just really, really good. Right on. I like musicals already. And one of my majors in college was international politics, which means I also just politics in general. So naturally, when that came out, it was right up my alley, and I had to listen to it for sure. I highly recommend it. It is super funny, super good. It's all the things that you expect from educational good music. Yeah, and it's it's entertaining, most of all. It's just, it's it's all upbeat. Well, most most of it's upbeat, and it's, it's really good. Like, if you, if you can listen to all, like, five million songs that, that's on there, because some of them are only a minute long, but it's a full, full-length musical, so it's like, there's like there's literally like 65 tracks on the on the album. Um, if you listen to the whole thing and you don't find a song in there that you want to listen to it again, uh, check your polls. Like that's 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 the story. That's the moral of this episode is check your polls. <laughs> if you need something else to listen to, the new Nine Inch Nails is really good too. Uh, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I didn't even know they had one. Yep, or just came out. Had one? It just was released. Yep. Is he still doing everything by himself and then playing live with a band? Uh, I mean, for the for, for the most part, yeah. As far as I'm aware. Yeah, that's, that's the best way when you're Trent Reznor. <laughs> um, yeah. Seven minute silence. Yeah. No. Um, so, Jen, <laughs> you don't just you don't just do guest appearances on podcasts. You do your own stuff as well. What What do you got going on? She so, watches cats on the weekends. Uh, she's a cat sitter <laughs> um and dogs and everything i have a menagerie at home already so i like to add to it you know and get paid for it um yeah so i do the the geek girls podcast um that is a project that um september and i started a little over a year ago when we got together and said i want to do podcast she's like i want to do podcast all right well we're gonna do a podcast um no so now it's been a magical adventure um it's one of the most amazing cathartic awesome things that we do we talk about whatever the hell we want to talk about um there's not really any particular agenda other than the fact that um we're both female hosts and that's like the whole idea of it was let's be every podcast we listen to is either fully hosted by dudes or has one token chick so let's just be two chicks hosting a podcast and that's it and it's called geek grills um we have had so much fun we've had some really awesome guests on uh, we actually had Jury on recently, which was crazy. He's like hard to like wrangle. Like I was, <laughs> we were like, where do we go with you, Jury? It was so much energy, and you're all over the place. But it's been really, really fun. Um, I'm actually about to start another podcast. Um, it's going to be called uh, Squelch. Um, it's a uh, going to be a lighthearted, very short Hearthstone podcast that I'm going to be doing with a buddy of mine, Dano. Um, and we're pretty excited about that. It's going to be really fun. It's really light, really just silly. Uh, we have some really fun games planned, but it's mostly going to be like us challenging each other to do ridiculous things and play Hearthstone with ridiculous decks and super fun. So, yeah, those right. are my my pod, current podcasting foray is so, uh, yeah, Geek Grills. I I have a couple things for you. One, um, uh, Geek Grills is only on for eleven months out of the year because one month, uh, one whole month, September's busy. She's doing other things. Um, the other thing is. Uh, Oh, you, I'm glad you had jury on. I'm glad it was a good episode. I'm glad he had lots of energy because that's exactly opposite of what happened with me and Kent. We were <laughs> so looking forward to it. And 
I, I, for whatever for whatever reason, like we need to redo the episode with Jerry. We need to have him back on the show because, like, I, 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 I to this day it's like the most disappointing episode, only because there's like there's no energy to it at all. Like none of the three of us, all three of us were just like, oh no. Ugh. Yeah, we got we got Jerry like at the end of a long day. He was tired. Same. Yeah. We got him in the morning. <laughs> and yeah, key number one. <laughs> yeah. Um. And, and I say disappointing. It was still a good episode. I still enjoy it. It's still a good show. It's just man, it was it was. We expect. I think I think our expectations are just too high because it's our 99th episode. And we we're on that big run to 100, and uh, <laughs> I think we just shot ourselves in the foot. And and wow, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you gotta remember too he's also pimping right now so mm. and he was on point to pimp to pimp that action news so oh, yeah that was we, that definitely probably helped that was a missed opportunity because uh his, his campaign is almost over now we yeah. uh we failed to book him during this so i don't know uh, <laughs> i mean we, we could do something on like the weekend not saturday though because saturday i'm going zip lining with the kids Zip lining, yeah, yeah. you're doing all kinds of crazy awesome stuff like Alaskan I, adventure. Amos is Alaskan. Well, see, here's a, here, here's the thing. My my wife just went just got a, a full time job again. So we kind of had had to go this period of time where just living on my paycheck and wow, the money was getting a little tight. Um, but now she's working, so now we can actually enjoy our the rest of our summer. Then Amber and Ashley are leaving, and uh, we we can start planning winter activities. It's the real AAA, the Amos Alaskan Adventure. Uh, that's that's what that's the plaque I have above uh, my headboard. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you're stuck on the side of the road, call me. I'll help you out. I mean, what? I, mean, I feel like there's got to be an a, a AAA joke in there somewhere, and I can't find it. But it's there. It's there. Somebody knows it's there. <laughs> Amos around Alaska. Oh boy. Uh, <clears throat> Oh yeah. man. Um, so with, with geek grills, I mean, you, you, uh, uh, like uh, why the name? So originally it also is because <laughs> how the show started. So we were all viewers in, um, Willie Dills chat room, um, for Twitch. So uh, Willie Dills, Dills who streams, he, well, he used to stream. Wow. But now obviously when Hearthstone came out, I started streaming Hearthstone all the time. So a bunch of us were always just in Dills chat room and it became a joke that us girls in there, because the internet term grill, uh, we were Dill's grills. And a lot of that started because one day Dill's and I got drunk and we're like, oh, my God, you know, it'd be super fun if we did a heroes match versus Jocelyn. Joss plays and her ladies on Tuesday night. So it's going to be Dill's grills versus Joss play, Joss's ladies. And we're going to have this big exhibition match. Well, we went and we, we smoked them. We just destroyed them. It was, it was incredible. It was awesome. Uh, but then after we, when we had gotten together, um, September and also Lunescence was with us at the time, um, we were practicing, you know, going into it. And when we were all hanging out together, we're like, all right. And that's kind of how after the match, we were like, wow, we've really been having a good time hanging out with each other. Let's do a podcast. Let's just do it. Like, why not? Um, and, you know, it's geek girls, we're geeky women, we're geeky ladies, and I guess we're kind of reclaiming the term, too. Like, I come from playing, like, Counter-Strike back in the day when voice chat first showed up integrated into the game. Mm. And so I would I would hang out on the same server as I always hung out on, and then all of a sudden it's like, I'd be like hey, guys, I think they're, at a, they're heading to A, and it's like, oh, my God, it's a grill, ah, and all that crap. So I guess part of it is just reclaiming the name a little bit. So yeah, and we just like to talk about whatever. We're kind of like we our our theory is you can geek out about anything. Like whatever whatever you are excited about can be you can geek out about it. Like, like an, September she's like to cook. You like a mower. I mean, like, you know. Like like a, like a, like a new mower. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's fine though. That's cool. That's like that's your geek world. That's good. And yeah, so just kind of, you know, something to uh, we 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 literally talk about everything. We had an episode where we talked about like animal rescue and all that. And we had a guest on, and then we talked about like advancements in like DNA and like the whole um, CRISPR gene editing thing. When that came out, we had an episode where we talked about that, and we'll talk about whatever we're in the mood to talk about. Last week we talked about invisible illnesses um, because that's something that you know is just out there. And we wanted to ta- tackle kind of a heavier topic, but yeah, we just have fun. Um, 
Real quick, chat room is talking about uh, the the AAA, the AAA thing. Amos's Alaskan Adventure, um, and Squid comes in with the uh, Amos crab fishes this week on Alaska. Uh, Amos's Alaska Adventure. <laughs> you're, you're you're fucking around, but I have got an idea for a podcast called Learning Alaska, where all these different things that people hear about Alaska, I go and try them. You should and, do like, it and visit these places. Well, I have to retire first because I got I, I got to have the, the right. availability. But actually, go and like go to the slope and mine oil or whatever, drill oil with some people, and go out on a crab boat for like a, a, a trip, you know, and like actually do these things just to learn Alaska and actually bring back the real story of it. So uh, all all you've done now is give me the official title, Amos's Alaska and Adventure, because um, it, it, it was learning Alaska, uh, uh, that, but I, I I might like the AAA thing better. Yeah, no, that's I mean, Alaska is like this fascinating unknown place that I want to know more about. It's like this cool, like what it is in Alaska. Is it really like that? Right. Dude, and, and dude, you should do like a whole channel, like, like do a video portion, like where you maybe put up on YouTube, you know, little clips of the adventure and then have a podcast where you, you know, you talk for 30 minutes or an hour about it. Um, Maybe even do a, a blog while you're out there, you know, um, or I don't know. There's there's so many possibilities. I'm I'm in love with this idea. Yeah, like, do this. I also want to hear more this. about Kent's new podcast. Kent kills Kentucky. I don't know what that means, but I'm excited to hear more about it. Uh, um. <laughs> it's it's actually a reference to bourbon. Kent has uh, recently started getting into uh, into drinking whiskey, and what he's oh. found is that uh, 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 Kentucky sour mash is one of his favorite. So he's he's kind of going around the the whole Bourbon County thing, um, and it's going to culminate in Bourbon County, like with an actual live tasting um, at, at like every brewery in uh, in Bourbon County. So uh, uh, the Jack Still, Daniels one, Jim Beam. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> I'm I'm going to start that next week. Um, I will be yeah. I was I was going to visit uh, Jack Daniels first mm. and see how much I can drink before I pass out. Right. Right. And, and just keep that going. Like every, every distillery that I go to, I'm going to try to hit one, at least one. And, and, and it's, uh, it's, it's not day. shots, it's funnels. So it's just a matter yes. of, it's, I mean, yes. it's, just, it's like just a little valve and just going at it. Oh well, yeah. I mean, it's like a beer bong except whiskey. So yeah. This is yeah. like the hardcore version of, of my, uh, my Kunsan Korea tour. Right. Uh, this time with whiskey and uh, I'm going to keep doing it and just see how long I can stay out of the hospital. Right, right, and, and and I mean it's completely legit. I mean this is uh, because you you have to know if whiskey tastes the same after uh, after one funnel as it does after three. I mean that's that's a that's a right. See see if it tastes any different before puking versus after puking. Right, right, right. I'm, rest I'm in a, peace, rest in peace, Kent. That I, can be the after show. I, I'm a, I'm I'm especially looking forward to the uh, to the the mini series you're going to do on butt chugging. Uh, yes, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not really excited about that, but uh, I was bet to do that. And, um, uh, you know, I don't want to lose the 10 bucks on that bet. So, right. right. Cause uh, 10 bucks is a lot of bucks. Yeah, Cause butt chugging four ounces of, uh, of, of straight bourbon whiskey is worth the $10. <laughs> yeah. Butt chugging, butt chugging for 10 bucks. That's what it's called. <laughs> butt chugging for bucks. <laughs> <laughs> buck, buck, uh, hold on. The 10 buck butt chug challenge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coming soon to YouTube. Oh my god! Oh my god! Somebody put that in. Uh, somebody make that a title. Holy shit! <laughs> oh man! Um, that'll, that'll, that, 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 that'll, that'll teach a uh, chat room to give us some fucking uh, some ideas for for podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, so Jen, what, what about you? If you could have. Like just your dream podcast or, uh, you know, creative endeavor of any type, like your ultimate life quest goal. What what is the the thing that you would put out there to the world other than the Alaska thing and the butt chugging in the Bourbon County? Because that's right. I mean, Bur yes. Bourbon County butt chugging is already is that's that's taken Bourbon County butt chugging. That's it. <laughs> yeah. So, so you, when you, I was. When I was a little girl, no surprise, I talk a lot. Um, <laughs> really? Um, and as a talker, I used to always like the idea of talk radio. I always wanted to do like a talk radio show where I get to interview people. I really love interviewing. Um, and I didn't realize that I was actually pretty good at it until I started doing it with Geek Girls. And it's really been fun. I really feel like 
there's something special when you do an interview, um, like a one-on-one. I'd like to, I'd like to do something where I can do more one-on-one interviews. And if I could, uh, man, dream job, I would love to like, you know, get to get inside the heads of some of the writers and creators that I enjoy their content. Like, oh, so many, I'm, I'm a, I'm as a sci-fi reader, like I just dream of like having an opportunity to interview somebody like John Scalzi who wrote old man's war, which is one of my favorite books and series and just that kind of stuff. Like that would be so cool to like pick the brain of somebody like that and get inside their head, man. I'd love it. That would be fun. Yeah. I just want to tell people what to do. I want to be like the new Laura Schlesinger, but have no education to back it up. Just get people on the phone and be like, you're fucking up and here's how. That's like funny. You cause, are. Because I want to be. You the, have a problem. <laughs> I want to be the new Lawrence Lessig without an education to back it up. Oh, see, there you go. Like, I just want to be like, all right, you know what? Your life is going down the tubes. You need to knock that that crap off. Just knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> you're already Amos. You're already living the uh, Amos life uh, without education. So, I mean, right. Hey, and, and there's no one better at this than me. I'm telling you what. Like, <laughs> I, I fucking aced Amos life. Uh, oh man there's so oh man there's some deep cuts in there that we won't get into um oh, yeah no. <laughs> we'll, no, we'll, we'll wait until jen starts her podcast and interviews me um <laughs> yeah you, we'll get to yeah. the bottom of it we'll get right. we'll get there <laughs> i was gonna say amos you might have to accomplish something first uh uh, that's, that's, that's valid that's, that's <laughs> oh man uh, um, so I got, got a, a few things left in here. Uh, and one of them starts out like this. Uh, Derek Sievers, Sivers, Sivers, Derek Sivers. Sivers, weird or just different. Yeah, so th- this was a short one. I-, I highly recommend everybody go check this out, uh, like right after our show. Don't do it now, um, but go check this out. Um, <laughs> now for the podcast listeners, go ahead and hit pause and then go to YouTube or TED.com and check this out. Uh, Derek Sivers, Sievers, Sievers, Sivers, I don't know. Uh, weird or just different. Um, it's real short. It's like three minutes long. And he just puts out there that we have assumptions that we don't even know about. And sometimes you have to like go to the other side of the world to just see a different perspective to know that, wow, I, I just assumed so many things and uh, they're not – it's not necessarily true. Um, the, the, the big example that he gives is we assume that streets have names. Mm. So we, if you're standing on a street, like what street is this? Oh, you're on Maple or you're on mm. Fifth Street mm-hmm. or you know, whatever. Uh, but if you go over to Japan and you mm. ask them – what street is this? They're like, what, what, what do you mean? Uh, <laughs> uh, because they don't name their streets. They name their blocks. So here, if we say, if somebody asked us, what block is this? You're like, oh, you're at the corner of Fifth and Maple. And in Japan, if you say, what street am I on? They're going to say, oh, you're between blocks four and five. And uh, I can vouch for that. Uh, Amos, I'm sure you can too. Uh, when we lived in Japan, it was very difficult to give Americans directions to your house uh, because th- we were too stupid to follow a, a map with block numbers. We were like, all right, man, uh, you know where the, the big blue sign is? Yeah, take a left there it, it, and go it, up the streets. It was <laughs> worse than that, though. It was like, you know where the uh, the big blue house used to be? Take a left there. Like, yeah. what? wait, what, what the... F- <laughs> Um, no, tell me how to get to your house from the closest Cocos. Like that's valid. Yes. Yes. There's a Cocos is like more popular than McDonald's. I think uh, it tastes way better. That's for damn sure. Uh, It does. After you spend all night drinking, it does Uh, regardless. (laughs) It does before you spend it all night drinking. Not so much after. Uh, yeah, see, I'm not, I'm not the big (laughs) freak. Um, so in order to stomach the curry, especially some of the hotter ones, I pretty much had to d- just drown my stomach in beer and whiskey prior mm. or sake more likely. It's a uh, beer and sake. Uh, mm. <laughs> no, I was I, I I'm, I'm a fat kid, so I would rather just eat the damn food and then go drinking and then eat some more food like that's. That's eat, drink, eat, repeat. Yeah, that's, that, <laughs> that's how I roll like <laughs> 
This is, this isn't a drinking establishment. There's nowhere for me to eat food. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that's just me. Um, you know, this was really poignant for me this week, actually. Um, so I'm in a master's program. I'm going to be uh, uh, maybe someday I'll be a high school teacher. We'll see. Um, and Scary right note. now my class is structured. The class I'm taking is structured English immersion. So it's all about how to teach to English language learners. And one of the the chapters that I read this week was specifically about how to real to, to recognize the fact that these students have a completely different background. So when you try to tell a story or say something, they're not going to get it. Like the, one of the examples was, oh, there was a kid riding a, riding a bus. He was reading a magazine and he left his bag on the bus. And the story continues at the end. They're like, well, how, how did the person get the backpack back to his address? And the student was like, well, how did, how did they do that? How would they know where his address was? And it was because there was an assumption that it, in the U.S., when you get a, a magazine mailed to you, it has the address on the front, you know, for where they mm-hmm. sent it to you. Well, in Russia, where this kid was from, they don't do that. The only place you get a magazine is when you go to the store and buy it. You don't ever have it shipped to you. So this was completely foreign. It's just interesting to think about like think little things like that that aren't weird or don't seem weird are just completely they just have a completely different background. So I I, I thought this was really interesting to, to think about from that perspective. I considered it very very interesting in that there was a TED talk in the show notes that I forgot to watch. <laughs> um yeah, no um but I, one of the reasons I picked it, Amos, is because it's, it's something that uh, you and I had experience with, uh, you know, the the example that he stated. And uh, so even if you didn't watch it, you I knew you'd have something to say. So, <laughs> <laughs> of course, I always have something to say. That's like my policy mm-hmm. <laughs> on life. That's my motto yeah. on life, actually. <laughs> that, that's that's <laughs> have something to say, even if it's wrong. <laughs> Or irrelevant or annoying or probably the wrong thing. <laughs> Maybe all of the above. <laughs> all of the above all the time. There you go. That's what I do on this show. I just say annoying shit that doesn't matter. So, Amos, if you didn't watch the TED Talk, what, what sort of videos uh, might you have watched lately? Um, I, I watch a lot of Dude, YouTube. This man, this man hiked a glacier this week. I feel like we give him a pass. <laughs> like, I, think, I think maybe this is the pass you get when you hike a glacier. <laughs> Um, so, um, you mentioned YouTube. Was there any particular YouTube that, uh, caught your attention this week? Um, maybe, uh, so, uh, there, so uh, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. <laughs> oh, that's very poignant. Um, uh, yeah. Tell us more. I, I I'm going to, I'm going to play a, a little audio here. Ho- hopefully it comes through. Um, and uh, it just just listen to what he says, uh, and and just, just he, this is a person because uh, I'm trying to r- learn Twitch. Like I want to learn how Twitch works and everything else because of di- working on things for Diamond Club TV and working on things for Rich from Israel, all that kind of stuff. So I'm watching these videos, and this video struck me as like, what the hell? So just just listen to the. You don't even have to watch the video. Just listen to it, okay? So hopefully it comes through. And then you see this box right here. It says archive broadcasts. Which that does is basically allows Twitch to save your videos, your broadcasts. Uh, did you hear that? Please tell me that said archive. Archive. Archive broadcasts. <laughs> archive broadcasts. He said bro- uh, archive broadcasts. I hear, when I hear it, I hear archive broke asses. Like, bro- like that broke ass motherfucker. <laughs> that is so, definitely so, okay. archive. So, so here, 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 here you go again. Here you go. And then you see this box right here. It says archive broadcasts, which that does. archive broadcasts is definitely his rap name. And then you see this box right here. It says archive broadcasts, <laughs> which that does is basically yo archive broadcasts here. Broadcasts. <laughs> I I that is horrible <laughs> and terrible. And, and also hilarious. box right I, here. It says archive broadcasts. <laughs> which that does. This is a four minute video and I, I, I didn't watch it past it that point. archive. Like archive broadcasts. R dot chive. I like that. Uh, 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 sure. Sure. It's it. it uh, according to what, uh, what I read in English, it says archive broadcasts. But, Correct. <laughs> uh, but you know, I mean, it, who am I to say it's not archive broadcasts? Or broadcasts. Broadcasts. 
<laughs> I mean, this this video has fifty four thousand views, and this dude has three point nine thousand subscribers. This is why I've committed myself to working in the education system. Hopefully, one student at a time, I can help avoid such videos as this one. So there's Maybe. that. Hopefully. <laughs> Oh geez, yeah, um, <laughs> man. You know, if for, when I saw that you put this in the notes, I was like, okay, why? Okay, first of all, why is he um, giving us a how-to, like a Twitch how-to? That's what and I what, was trying to figure out too. <laughs> and why did he timestamp it like for the middle? Like, what the hell? And first then of I all, actually, I, want, I time stamped it to show you that it can be time stamped. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Uh, throw back to last week. Uh, yeah, it's, it can be done, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Just not by kit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Then I, I listened to it a couple of times. I was like, I didn't hear that right. Hold on, let me start it again. <laughs> like on the third time through, I was like, okay, I know why he put it in here now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's that. Um, <laughs> what, what else we got to cover this week? What other topics we got on here? Um. Well. Um. So, one thing that I that I do want to point out. Um, what, something that we like to do on this show is is um, send our trash diggers out on a quest. Mm. And um, th- this week was no different. So, uh, um, well, this one this one's kind of special. Uh, th- this one actually took a little bit of a turn um, because Jen, you 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 like to role play, and uh, yeah, you you like to like to have fun. Have you ever LARPed? Yeah, I did actually LARP for years. Um, okay. I was um, actually a storyteller of my own LARP game too. We found some of your inspiration because everybody knows there's these reenactments <laughs> that, that take place. And uh, we, we, we went, we, we, we dug deep, we dug deep and we found a, uh, a, a little something about you um, from back in your early, early LARPing days in the classical sense. Oh boy. Yeah. So um, yeah. All right, so this is a uh, this is actually a, a transcript that someone uh, uh, put together for a speech that you gave uh, while you're while you're playing a character. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and read it. So, all right, so here this is uh, this is Jin uh, playing a character. Uh, I believe it's a uh, political a, a, a political thing. game, right? It's it's uh, like like I said, it's a, it's a classical environment. It's not uh, it's not your. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I am. It's true. Yeah. Okay. So here so, we go. All right. So th- this do, is Jen. Do you want to read it or do you want me to read it? I'll, I'll read it. I'll read okay. it. All right. So this is Jen. Four score and seven years ago, our lady emotions brought forth on this real doll, a mythic nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all geeks are created dark. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that LARPers or any LARPer so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the political task remaining before us so that this nation under Marissa Tomei shall have a new birth of freedom in that government of the grills by the grills and for the grills shall not perish from the arch hive. Um, I mean, that's incredible. It, it is. <laughs> it is so good that you are so far ahead of your time. Uh, I was. You were like 12 or something like that at the time. I mean, yeah, this is insane. Definitely. Oh my god! Oh yeah. yeah. So thank you to our uh, trash divers again. <laughs> uh, uh, seriously, and, and and they're all in chat room. Uh, they know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> all geeks are definitely created dark. See, there you go. <laughs> oh man! Hey, oh, oh, Jen, what do you got coming up here? Uh, here, here soon in your life, and how can people uh, get a hold of you and find you and follow you around and stalk you and get the cops called on themselves? <laughs> Yeah, careful. Watch out. And also, Blue Apron. Did I mention that? Um, so, also, don't make your own laundry soap. It won't bode well for you. Um, also, my dog heard me say that and got really nervous and, that, like, and started making noises. So, I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> you can you can follow me at the Jen Says on Twitter. Um, also, I am streaming on Twitch, and I'll be streaming a lot more um, now that my emo finally got approved on Twitch. So I'm affiliate there. Um, I'll be streaming, and most of my streaming is going to be um, these days. It's been heroes, other fun Steam games, um, but I also plan on um, recording 
podcast live there too. So that'll be happening soon. Um, but yeah, the Gen says on Twitter and twitch.tv slash the Gen plays. You can check me out there. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty cool. I'm pretty accessible on the interwebs. Oh, and Geek Girls podcast, geekgirls.com. Go listen to it. We, we like when you listen to it and then give us feedback. Nice. How about you, Kent? Uh, yeah, check me out on Twitter at RM underscore Del Noche. I'm starting to get more active, so uh, interact with me, and I will continue to be more active. Amos, what about you? Uh, well, first of all, I just want to say that if you are watching this on DiamondClub.tv, or if you have watched this on DiamondClub.tv, or if you would like to watch this on DiamondClub.tv, uh, anything having to do with DiamondClub.tv, we got a great group <laughs> of folks that is redesigning the site, um, really putting a lot of effort into it. Uh, it's, it's it's going through some changes, uh, kind of like uh, 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 one of the Brady kids. And um, cruise on over to DCTV.link slash 2017 dctv.link forward slash 2017. Take the poll. It's, it's, it's there to find out who uses the site, what they use it for, what features they're, they're using most often. It's going to give us a, a way to prioritize everything so that we can, uh, when we do the rebuild, we know what to tackle first and hit hard. And uh, I mean, this, this is a community event. It's, it's for the community, by the community, and we're going to make it the best diamondclub.tv that it can possibly be. So the next iteration of diamondclub.tv is all in your hands. DCTV.link forward slash 2017. Um, and other than that, you can find me at Ethan Kane on the Twitter. You can follow the show at Ritual Misery. Cruise on over to ritualmisery.com forward slash support. Find out all the different things we're doing and uh, all the ways that you can support us and, and help us along with uh, my dream of retiring and flying around Alaska. Um, uh, next week I will not be here. We may or may not have Viking last. That's kind of the planned thing, but we, we're not sure that yet. Um, if not, then Kent, maybe, maybe Kent will do his own call-in show like I did when he couldn't show up. So there's all that. And, uh, man, we, we gotta, we, we gotta give a little thanks to, uh, Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use his music. Um, it's going to be cutting in very soon. I think maybe I hope. And for me, for Kent and for the Jen, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>